It's now my great honor to call upon Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin and Senior Advisor Ivanka Trump to, respectively, unveil the seal of the United States Embassy and to read the dedication. On behalf of the 45th President of the United States on America, we welcome you officially and for the first time to the Embassy of the United States here in Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary, and thank you, Ivanka. In 1980, a Jewish man of 19 was married to a Jewish woman of 17 in Ethiopia. That night, the married couple shed all indicia of their Jewish heritage and set forth on foot on a lengthy trek through the desert until they reached the Sudan. There, they were led to a remote airfield and taken by an Israeli military aircraft to Israel. Having been rescued, they settled in the town of Sterot on the Gaza periphery, and years later, they were kept safe from incoming rockets by the Iron Dome, an Israeli missile defense project financed by the United States. One of their daughters went on to become a successful singer, and she is here with us today to sing Hallelujah, the great word of praise coined by King David, the first Jewish king of Israel. Please welcome Chagit Yasso. The U.S. Embassy has formally been shifted and opened in Jerusalem. Daniel Pagani is in Jerusalem and joining us now. We're seeing a cultural program, but even while all these celebrations are being conducted by the Israelis and the U.S. government, we believe 41 Palestinians have been killed in protests in Gaza as well. In fact, uh, good evening to you and to all our viewers, uh, saying these on the notes of Alleluia, which is a song which could be, should be the symbol of peace, is incredible. While inside the new embassy of the United States in Jerusalem, uh, they are parting, uh, there are celebration for the long-standing friendship between the United States of America, perhaps uh, the most uh, pro-Israel uh, uh, United States of America we have ever seen, and uh, uh, high dignitaries of Israel and the religious world, uh, uh, on the border with Gaza, more than 40 Palestinians have been killed, have not been killed by random people, but they have been killed by the Israeli Defense Forces who are uh, trying uh, to, uh, this is what they say, avoid them uh, to break the fence of the border and therefore break inside Israeli territory. So these are two uh, images of uh, the same story, which as always, uh, when things happen in this side of the world, in Israeli and Palestinian, do conflict enormously. On the one side, we have celebrations for a new embassy opening to what all the establishment of the United States of America repeatedly defined uh, the capital of Israel. And on the other hand, uh, we have uh, Palestinians protesting against uh, this move because they believe that uh, Jerusalem, where they were living before the military occupation, is their own capital city uh, dying in Gaza shot at. Just. Uh to reiterate what you have been pointing out uh, f f the whole day, that the, the building itself was always present even though the formal opening has just been done. 
Yes, exactly. Uh, we have also to point out that this is uh, not a new building. It has not been constructed uh, uh, from scratch. It was already there. The consulate was uh, serving there. So as of now, it is only, so to say, a change of board in front of the building. We are also given to understand that the ambassador of the United States of America will not work full time there. As of now, he will uh, divide his time between uh, Tel Aviv, which is the internationally recognized capital city of Israel, and the new embassy in Jerusalem. 86 dignitaries and representatives of several states have been invited. We know that uh, 33 only decided to accept the invitation. India, for instance, is one of the states who decided not to attend any celebration. This is once again a way that uh, New Delhi has uh, to tell to the world that its own stand when it comes to Israel and Palestine is independent. It considers both the entities at the same level and wants to you know, pursue relations, positive relations uh, with the uh, both Israel and Palestine. This is what India has uh, been saying for uh, a long time. Daniel, again, uh, the Hamas health ministry is saying 41 Palestinians killed even while this opening is uh, going on. Extremely tight security though in Jerusalem. We believe a thousand Israeli policemen will be around the embassy possibly for an indefinite time, not just for this opening. Yes, exactly. You believe right. I tried to reach the embassy. I could reach to a certain checkpoint, but the media who were not invited specifically inside of the ceremony were not allowed in. There are several checkpoints before getting to the embassy, but also before getting inside the neighborhood where the embassy is located. I myself, for instance, was, were, was controlled before entering the neighborhood. So this means a couple of kilometers before uh, the embassy. Yes, uh, the Israeli forces the Israeli security forces and the people here in Jerusalem do expect things to get ugly uh, very, very soon, especially perhaps after the evening prayers. There have been sporadic clashes. Remember that Hamas, but not only Hamas, even Fatah, called for the Palestinians to take to the street and protest the embassy move. We will see in the coming hours what happens, Amitad. Daniel. Have you been able to feel the pulse of the people in Jerusalem? We're seeing the Israeli government and the majority of uh, administration who are, who are celebrating this move, but uh, what's it like for uh, normal people in Jerusalem? I haven't interacted with any government official during the day. They are very busy with the embassy celebration. But I have interacted with many people on the street, many Israeli citizens on the street. Uh, there is a sense of joy. No one is absolutely criticizing anything about uh, this relocation of the embassy. Uh, a sentence that I've heard many times is, uh, we do regret that we need the United States of America to support us in order to decide our own capital city, which is ours uh, by right and by religion is right. This is what uh, I, I hear many times. So uh, they are very happy. They are all very thankful for this move when it comes to the um, to President Donald Trump deciding to finally uh, actually move the embassy from uh, Tel Aviv uh, to Israel. Uh, when it comes to the Palestinian side, well, obviously, as you can imagine, as you, we all can see what is happening, the version is completely different. Uh, but among them, there is a sense of uh, frustration, I would say, because they feel very much isolated. Why isolated? Because there is actually no old Arab ally standing up for them and helping them to fight back. They, have, they feel they are being left alone by their traditional allies. And just after today, you know, every, the, the focus today is on the opening or the shifting of the embassy. Does the American ambassador stay permanently now in this building or wherever his residence is in Jerusalem or will he be moving back to Tel Aviv? No, uh, he will not stay permanently. He will stay here for the first day to kick off, so to say, uh, the first works and the first jobs. But uh, as long as uh, the final, I would say, building of the embassy is not built, uh, which will take, of course, a time, uh, most of the functions uh, uh, will uh, still go on in the consulate, which is in Tel Aviv. So he will divide himself. We don't know how many days he will spend in one place or the other, but we know he will divide his time between the consulate in Tel Aviv and the embassy in Jerusalem. 
Jerusalem. As I said, the building here in Jerusalem is not equipped also to host all the staff of the embassy and all the functions of the embassy. It was only uh, the representative consulate. So it needs to, uh, the several buildings need to be built in uh, the coming months. Uh, but they're already at work and President Donald Trump made it very clear that they, they intended to put all the necessary energies in order to uh, get it uh, operative as soon as possible. And again, the, the pictures that we're seeing extremely contrasting. On one side, uh, Gaza, those protests, thousands of people have been injured, uh, over 40, we believe, killed celebrations here with the unveiling of the United States seal. Now, this is a perfect example of uh, President Trump overturning his predecessor or the previous regime's policies, another one of them. And that's probably illustrated by the people who are present there, including the ambassador to uh, U.S., the Treasury Secretary, Ivanka Trump, and uh, Jared Kushner. We do believe there are some senators and congressmen and some governors, but no Democrats, apparently. Absolutely no. And this is, uh, I would define it a very unilateral sort of uh, celebration. Remember that Democrats are absolutely not walking in a foreign land when they come and visit Israel. Democrats uh, have always advocated very strongly for a uh, peace process and also some of them for Jerusalem as the capital city of Israel. But uh, this administration wants to very unilaterally claim that, uh, uh, so to say, it has, it had uh, the bravery and the courage to do what no other administration dared to do remember that uh, it was back in 1995 that the United States Congress voted to shift the embassy from the internationally recognized uh, capital city of Israel, Tel Aviv, uh, to the wholly contested city of Jerusalem. But no U.S. administration. Well, we seem to have lost that line uh, with uh, Daniel Pagani, who's uh, reporting live uh, from Jerusalem, and those pictures, contrasting pictures, clearly illustrating uh, the situation with. Uh, violent protests over 40 Palestinians killed and celebrations at uh, the uh, the US embassy now in Jerusalem it has been opened there